Have you noticed how every slide deck, keynote, LinkedIn post, and podcast this year highlight the same thing? 2025 is the year of AI agents. This feels like the usual AI hype, but I wanted to know the foundation behind all this buzzword use once again. So I dug in. What I found is that the excitement is actually grounded in eight very practical shifts and the best way to understand them is to start from the very bottom with a lonely language model that can do nothing more than predict the next token. On its own, a model just chats. We give it a prompt, it spits back text. And that's the end of the story. It can't reach for a calculator, can't browse the web, can't remember who you are, and certainly cannot go click a download button when you ask it to install Word. So for years, we kept bolting things on, retrieval for fresh knowledge, co-interpreters for math and data, long-term memories for user context. Those bolt-ons are what we usually bundle under the label tools inside a workflow. Our workflow is simply you or me hard coding a chain of steps. Maybe we fetch documents, maybe we let the model write SQL, maybe we pass the result back for summarization. It can get crazy elaborate routers like Not Diamond that decide which model to call, majority vote ensembles that negotiate the best answer, which is when you ask the same question to a few models or the same model multiple times and aggregate the answers to get the best one, or even add feedback loops where a second model acts as a judge. But every branching path is still traced out by a developer ahead of time with clear prompts or conditions the system follows. That rigidity is fine as long as the problem stays predictable. But the moment we need the system itself to choose tools, adjust its plan mid-flight, or cope with surprises in its environment, we need something more autonomous. That's where agents come in. The industry agrees that a workflow becomes an agent when it follows three core principles. Being something that autonomously decides what it must do, with a plan, according to the environment. Give an agent a high-level goal and a toolbox, and instead of us routing every request by hand, the agent sketches its own plan, calls the tools it thinks it needs, rewrites the plan when a pop-up blocks a web page or when something unexpected happens, and keeps a memory of what just happened so the next step makes sense. For example, you want it to remember the logins for a platform it used yesterday, so it needs to store and retrieve that somewhere, while also needing to know it has a memory and know it can look in there if there's some kind of login requested. See how it's all much more autonomous, or could we say human? Think of Devin, the AI software engineer that resolves real GitHub issues end-to-end. -end. It builds, tests, debugs, and revises code in a terminal loop the way a junior developer would. Not because someone spelled out every keystroke, but because the agent reasons through the tasks on its own. You can almost see an agent as replacing someone rather than pure tool as with a workflow. There's also Julius, the AI data analyst, a perfect real world example of what we just defined and we're generous enough to sponsor this video. Julius combines four core capabilities that line up exactly with the agentic theory perception, reasoning and planning, action and feedback. It perceives every kind of input you throw at it, code, text, tables, database, spreadsheets, or even images, and turns them into structured data it can reason with. Then it plans out next steps using both symbolic logic and large-scale language modeling, remembering every detail of the conversation so it doesn't lose the thread. When it needs to act, Julius doesn't ask you to micromanage it. It calls the right tools, whether that's running Python, installing a library, scraping a website, or generating a visualization. And after each step, it checks on its own work, figures out what went right or wrong, and adjusts, closing the loop automatically. For example, I uploaded an export of my user data for each landing page on our 2 AI Academy platform, and just asked to help me understand which page worked and which didn't. It then studied the whole file, ran experiments by itself to digest the data, and gave me back super useful details on the landing pages themselves. But what's even cooler are these final takeaways that I could directly apply to improve our platform conversion. That perception, planning, action, feedback cycle is precisely what separates an autonomous agent from a fancy chatbot, and Julius delivers it out of the box. Of course, that autonomy is expensive. 
agents read and write many more tokens, run more submodels, and need stronger safety nets. So before you try to implement one, you may want to use this checklist. First, is the task complex enough that the variability is worth the cost? Will a wrong turn be catastrophic or just mildly annoying? Because even if you have 99% accuracy with your models, agentic systems will loop over and over and make many more interactions, which will eventually lead to errors. That will happen. Second, is the problem complex enough? Usually a workflow is enough and this agentic term is just used to spread hype. For example, does the agent need multiple tools that you don't know when it should or shouldn't use it in advance? This leads us to the third point. If you don't exactly know the exact process to follow step by step or exactly what style the user want to receive. This is where the autonomy that the agents bring can become quite interesting. And lastly, do you have the budget to let the thing think? Agents will indeed use way more tokens just by coming up with a plan, iterating with it, trying out different paths, etc. It's way more costly and has more randomness than just pure LLM calls in a clear workflow. Entropic actually shared a nice slide about these exact same points, saying that if the task is complex enough, adds value, is doable, and the error cost is low, then it's a potential agentic solution. Likewise, they had another slide demonstrating these cool points with their agent product, Cloud Code, which is basically Cloud with terminal access. Here, they share that the complexity is good enough since solving GitHub issues and making PRs is quite complex. It adds value, just think of the engineer's salaries. It has potential since models like Cloud are trained on lots of code. And most importantly, the cost of error is quite low since there are unit tests and approval in place to make sure nothing too dramatic happens. So the moment those answers tilt towards yes, like in Cloud Code's case, an agent becomes compelling. And 2025 is the tipping point because eight background trends have finally matured all at once. Just keep in mind that unless you know your problem is too complex, yet you know that LLMs are powerful enough to ultimately do the task, you typically want to start with simple workflows and grow from there. Otherwise, building agents is pretty much a business in itself and not just a tiny side project. All right. Now that we've seen what are agents and why they exist, let's dive into these eight reasons I promised explaining why they are starting to come out now. First, model quality improvements from pre-training alone are flattening out. Benchmarks like MMLU keep inching forward, but not at the super fast pace of 2023 and early 2024. That plateau pushes researchers to squeeze more juice at inference time, which is at the moment the model exchanges with users through planning and tool use. Classic agent territory. Second, all models are becoming quite similar. Gemini, Cloud, GPT, DeepSeek, Mixtral, Grok, their scores are converging, which means you can swap them in and out of an agentic system without rewriting half your stack and prompts. Third, Context windows exploded into the million token range. So an agent can carry its rolling memory, a browser dump, and a chunk of company policy all at once, instead of juggling them in and out of short-term memory. Fourth, token prices keep dropping, while fifth, the generation speeds keep growing, shrinking the premium we pay for those long, tool-heavy conversations. Sixth, we now have reasoning-optimized models, architectures that deliberately spend more compute during inference when the task is more complex. They are now standard offerings rather than research toys, so agents can inspect, critique, and refine their own drafts without killing latency. This is perfect for making a plan. I made a video about reasoning models if you are interested in learning how they are made and how they work. Seventh, the tool ecosystem grows exponentially faster. OpenAI's structured output hits perfect reliability, and Google's agent-to-agent -agent protocol landed in April to let agents from different vendors talk over a shared standard, while Anthropic's open-source Model Context Protocol, or MCP, gave us a plug-and-play way for Model to reach file system, cloud drives, and business applications. So wiring up new tools is suddenly a weekend project instead of a month of glue code. 
We also covered the MCP and A2A protocol in another video recently if you'd like to learn more about these. And lastly, the quiet but crucial one, best practice safety tooling or maturing. Automated judges, human in the loop reviews, red team simulators, the cost of an error is no longer a showstopper because we have systematic ways to catch the worst failures on the fly. Put together, these eight shifts make autonomy the next plausible path for all developers to try implementing. Workflows still rule for simple jobs, and they should. Always pick the simplest thing that could work. But when the decision tree is too tangled to hard code, when your tool list changes every sprint, when your user base expects best spoke answers and remembers how you spoke to them yesterday, an agent shines. Give it a goal, a memory, and the keys to your toolkit, and let it decide whether to call a search API, fire off an SQL query, or draft an email on your behalf. Validate its plan with automated checks first and human review for the scary steps, and then hit execute and watch it loop until the job is done. That looping autonomy is why 2025 feels different. A year ago, agents were flashy demos that didn't work so well like when Devin exploded, but then disappointed everyone. Today, they are sliding into real product backends, Devin ships fixes in enterprises, CI pipelines, and even though it's too complex to work all the time, we see new systems like Manus every few weeks and Claude's MCP-powered agents are popping everywhere. The ground truth is simple. The primitives, cheap tokens, wide context, and interoperable tools finally caught up with the vision. And that means the buzzword agent is about to fade into the background the same way LLMs did. We'll just assume software can sense, plan, and act. So when the next presentation declares this is the year of agents, know that it's not just hype. Even though there's always a bit too much hype in this field, this is your reminder that the infrastructure is ready and from now on, autonomy is growingly a viable option. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to learn more about agents and build your own, please check out our agents course on the Towards AI Academy platform made in partnerships with my friend at Decoding ML. We teach you to build agents from the ground up. Check it with the link below. Thanks again to Julius for sponsoring this episode and for showing us what a real end-to-end -end AI agent looks like in practice. I continued using it after we mentioned it earlier, sending more files and requesting specific advice on how to improve, and it proved to be quite helpful. If you'd like to have an agent do all your data analysis, try it out with the first thing below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.